Thanks, Isika. Hi. A very good morning to all the esteemed speakers, our distinguished guests, participants, my friends and colleagues. I am Origin. I am one of the organizing committee members. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you all on behalf of Association of Indian Primatologists and the Psychology Department of Mysore University to the second conference of Association of Indian Primatology. First of all, we are really overwhelmed by the response from your side and how you cooperated with us regarding this process. Yeah, we know there are a lot of hiccups, but yeah, finally we reached here. And that's why thank you all very much. So I guess you all know about little bit about AIP, but I don't want to miss out this opportunity to talk about it. So uh, actually, uh, around six, seven years back, uh, when I was, you know, quite new into primatology, that time when we used to talk with like-minded people, that time one thing that always rise up, and we all, you know, among the all discussion that was common, that we lack a common platform for engagement. And that's what, where the idea started to coming in. And finally, in uh, 2019, we formed AIP, and all of we formed AIP, and in November 1st and 2nd, we had our first AIP meet at CSIIC. Thereafter, yeah, long break. In between, uh, COVID was there, the COVID restriction and all, we were unable to do anything. But uh, uh, we virtually were quite active. We organized a couple of uh, uh, workshops and also series of talks. Late Stock Primate was one of the major talk series where we welcome all the national and international STEM primatologists there. And I would also like to say that uh, in 2020, uh, 21, we organized one one week workshop on basic course of primatology, and I am proudly saying that not only Indian participant, participant for South Asia, Southeast Asia, North America, South America, all participated, and you know, in spite of different uh, time schedule and time zone, they all participated, and it was a great success. So now finally we are going to begin our program. So we are immensely thankful to Professor Mayor Singh and uh, also we are thankful to our Vice Chancellor Sir Professor Loknath NK and Vice Chairman of the University of Mysore. And we also like to thank Chairman of the Department of Psychology, Dr. Sampath Kumar Sir, uh, for co-organizing this event with us. We are also very like uh, would like to you know thank to all of our sponsors that IUCN small uh, section of small apes, uh, Arunak and PCI along with Department of Psychology and Mysore University. So now I will ask uh, our chairman sir to come on the stage and. Uh, share some th of his thoughts with us. Yelrugo uh, Namaskara. Good morning, everyone. I am very happy to announce that 2024 is a remarkable year in the history of psychology department. The department was established in 1924, and this year we are completing 100 years of imparting psychology education and research. It is a historical moment for the department. As we are marking this moment with three events, today in this function, our Honorable Vice Chancellor is going to inaugurating all the three events. Uh, first one is centenary celebration of the department. And as part of the centenary celebration, Sir is also inaugurating second conference of the association of Indian primatologists and also Mysore University Psychology Alumni Association. As the chairman of the department, it is my immense pleasure to announce that the ceremony celebration, centenary celebration will be carried out throughout the year 
with various academic activities, uh, special lectures, series, workshops, conference, which will be conducted by the department in collaboration with the Alumni Association. I believe that our university will cooperate with full support and uh, for all these activities. On this special occasion, as a mark of the beginning of the centenary celebration of the department, in collaboration with Association of Indian Primatologists, <coughs> he is hosting the second conference of Association of Indian Primatologists. <laughs> it is my honor to welcome Professor N. K. Lokanath, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, University of Mysore, Mysore, for the inaugural function. We are also grateful for your presence, sir. On this occasion, I also welcome Professor Meva Singh, lifelong distinguished professor of psychology, University of Mysore, Mysore. I cordially welcome Dr. Arjit Pal, Arjit Pal, Dr. of AIP for this historical moment. I extend my warm welcome to the delegates, participants of this conference, and I also welcome students, all alumni of the department, research scholars, teaching and non-teaching staff of the psychology department. I welcome one and all for the program. Thank you all. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, I'd now like to invite Professor Loknath uh, N.K. to come and say a few words. Very good morning to all. Respected Professor Neva Singh, eminent professor of psychology of our university, and the Professor Sampath Kumar, the chairperson of the Department of Psychology, and the other dignitaries, other alumni of the department, as well as from the other places, and the faculty members, and non-teaching non staff members, research students, students, and media persons. I am basically from physics. So when I thought to know about this 100 years of psychology department, first I got a mail called AAP conference. As a physics, you know that AAP means for us American Institute of Physics. So it's a big <laughs> we celebrate. I am really surprised how AAP is invited because it's a very big thing where you need to go for election. And after that, I came to know that. So this is a different organization where psychology people can work on this. I am uh, seeing the Manasangudri from the last 35 years. The last 35 years, I am seeing only one person who works 24 into 7 is only our Neva Singh. Other than nobody is there. Whenever, whenever I visit his place, it's always just, and also, Whenever he publishes papers or whenever he will uh, have uh, some grant, something else, or he got an award, first thing is he write to me that I got this. I am really happy that uh, one person in the department, the whole university campus working for this and after retirement also, I am saying uh, such a person working from morning till evening. He is available all the time, this year. Other than he goes for meeting. I am really, sir, uh, grateful to you. So your work will be continued like this and also I am seeing that just now we talked about his energy is increasing day by day. So most of the retired people say, we don't want any work, it's enough for me. And, but with us, Professor Neva Singh case, it's very, very different. As we mentioned here, uh, Department of Psychology has its own history. So as Professor Sampath Kumar mentioned that it has started in 1924, now we came to 2024. It's exactly 100 years. And the very important thing is this is the second oldest department of psychology in this country. So that's the most important thing. And also probably you are all know about Professor M. E. Gopal Swami, an eminent psychologist who also started Akashwani and then it becomes All India Radio. Probably everybody knows about this. This has happened in his house in Mysore. And also very important to the University of Mysore is Rashtrakwe Pompo is a product of this department. Since then the department has served many, many eminent psychologists. I heard that the alumni of this department has uh, 
serving in the world, all over the world in different fields like academics, administrations, politics, and business, etc. I'm very happy that during my tenure, the centenary celebrations has been going on from this year. Definitely, we will see that more academic activities will be happening in the department. We know that the faculty strengths are decreasing the department. We need to improve that one. Then we will have a great programs. So similarly, I'm basically a physics man, so I know about little bit biology because I work on biophysics. I know about little about the primates. As primates are the closest uh, relatives of humans, therefore, primatology is very, very important subject for area of scientific research. The, the research uh, on small to large primates covers ranging from ecology and behavior of biomedical research. So, and the most important thing is this subject has uh, interdisciplinary. It includes such as psychology, zoology, physical anthropology, and medicine. So, probably you all know that. So India has as much as 24 species of primates, includes lorises, langurs, and an ap. Ape is a prominent primate habitat country, and this association of Indian Indian uh, primatologists has a key role in uh, to play to advance scientific research in primatology. I am also very happy that this is the second conference to be held in the Mysore University. And on behalf of the university, I welcome you all and hope that you will have a fruitful discussions in these three days. And also in the same time, our chairman has mentioned that uh, this university is also having, uh, inaugurating its Psychology Alumni Association. So, Mysore University Psychology Alumni Association. This is very important because at least after 100 years, he has made an effort uh, to make uh, all alumni to, together I heard that a lot of members already has been interested to join these associations. So certainly the seniors, uh, alumni members will definitely help us to carry further this department to a higher heights. And I will not speak too much as uh, I know the most important thing which I observed with Professor Neva Singh at the time. So yesterday night I called, I said, he said 9.30 is 9.30, so I came in 9.30 before. So I don't want to waste his time on this because it's an academic uh, uh, interaction, so therefore you need to have more academic interaction between the people. So, And also I'm very happy that I am also inaugurated this uh, Mystery University Psychology Alumni Association, and I wish you all the best and thank you. Uh, could I also uh, request uh, the chairman to come back on stage to inaugurate the event? Uh, so can I now request you all to water the plant and inaugurate the event? for that and uh, now we'd just like to present uh, each of you with some flowers. So uh, the chairman, Dr. Sampat Kumar, okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Professor Lokna Kanke, <laughs> Professor Meva Singh, for Dr. Sampat Kumar. <coughs> so, Arjit, would you like to come back and complete the announcements? Okay. Okay, so now uh, we are going to begin with our first uh, inaugural talk and um, 
Yes. Okay. The our, our event is now open and inaugurated, and we're ready to begin. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we would like to thank the, uh, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Mysore for presiding uh, for this session. And uh, we would also like to thank the Chairman of uh, Psychology Department, Dr. Sampath Kumar sir, and the uh, eminent professors uh, on and off the dais, and all the people who are being part of this uh, conference. So thank you everyone for being part of this conference. Thank you so much. <laughs> Vision is accommodate all people who are who wish to come to this platform and to present themselves to for extensive idea. And even though uh, we had a overwhelming response, but uh, we are happy to say that we were able to accommodate all of you here, and we are really proud. And for that reason, what happened? Our schedule is quite compact, but we strategically tried to make it you know mix and match. And I hope that you are you know it will relieve your monotony. There won't be any monotony. And the second thing is, uh, the allotted slot for each and every distinguished speaker and presenters, it's quite stringent. So please keep it in mind. We'll be here though to remind you that, but yeah. And another one thing, um, always wear your badge please, because that will help uh, university personnel, our AIP organizing committee, as well as uh, our caterer service people, uh, food service people, to distinguish you uh, from university candidates. So yeah, this uh, ID card is your food coupon. <laughs> and yeah, uh, prior to each session, please uh, share your presentation with us. That is very important. And yeah, we know that evolution has happened through cooperation and cooperation is the key. So we'll again honestly request all of you to cooperate with us. And another one thing, again, I want to remind you, that we are AIP, you are AIP, we all together AIP. So all AIPians, let's do some private business. <laughs> so now I would like to request Professor Mayor Singh sir. You want to wait till 10 o'clock or we start? <laughs> uh, we are going ahead of time. Yeah, it's a wonderful to see. I think this is my first experience, you know, going ahead of time in the inaugural session. So yeah. Nice. Yes. So I think we can start. All of us are here. So yeah, definitely we can start. Please sir. You know, this is uh, when this conference was being organized, all these boys, you know, they just asked me to speak because you know that recently, a couple of months back, we lost a very eminent primatologist, Dr. Monod. Since I have had a long association with Dr. Monod, so these people asked me that you speak about Dr. Monod. It was very refreshing for me because I'm so tired of talking primatology for half century. <laughs> so it was very nice that I'll talk something about, not about primatology, but about uh, a primatologist. Because, uh, before I start talking about Professor Monod, 
and I'm sure you, most of you must have read our article on history of Indian primatology. You know, Indian primatology started somewhere in the uh, early 60s. Basically, you know, some people came from abroad, you know, Washburn students and with Darwin Devore and all those people they started uh, primatology. The pe people went to different countries. They went to Africa, they went to uh, Southeast Asia, and some people came to India. Charles Southwick came to Northern India to study rhesus monkeys, and uh, Phyllis J, who became Phyllis J, Dolly now later, she was studying langurs in UP and in uh, Madhya Pradesh, Hanuman langurs. And the Paul Simons was in Mysore, he studied uh, the Bond Mukaks near Mysore, near Bandipur. And at the same time, Yukimaru Sugiyama, he was also here in the South India working on Hanuman langurs near Dharwad. These are the people who started you know, the, the primatological research in the country. And there were two people who published some papers because they were working as assistants with these people. There was Dr. Southwick was with Aligarh Muslim University and there was uh, one uh, Mr. Siddiqui and later on Mr. Haman, he, they worked with uh, Chuck Southwick. And so there were one or two papers published where their names were there on the primatology papers. And there was uh, M.D. Parthasarthi in Central College Department of Zoology in uh, Bangalore. He worked with Juki Maru Sugiyama for some time. Uh, Paul Simons and Phyllis uh, J, they had no assistants, Indian assistants. So, couple of papers, there are I think of two papers, M.D. Parthasarthi with Yuki Maru Sugiyama. So these were two Indians who had some papers on primatology, but the Indian primatologist who started primatological research in the country was Professor S.D. Singh. Professor S.D. Singh was a psychologist, he did his master's actually with the prominent psychologist uh, uh, Dr. Hans Isaac in England. Then he came to Punjab University and he started work on monkeys in early 60s. And what he was doing was that he was studying he just looked at the monkeys in urban areas and forest areas and saw a lot of differences and he was an experimental psychologist. So he caught these monkeys, brought them to Punjab University Psychology Department and established a lab where he started comparing the behavior of these monkeys and did some really mind-blowing studies in those days in the early 60s. Studies on curiosity, on exploration, on aggression. I mean, he used to put the monkeys together from two big enclosures, from two sides food would be kept there or they would be just allowed to interact and so on. And he published a series of papers in very important journals those days, Psychonomic Science and uh, uh, Primates and in, in uh, mid-60s. Then in 1969, I am sure again most of you would have seen that classic paper called uh, Urban Monkeys. He was invited by American uh, Scientific American. Scientific American is the journal where you don't contribute. Scientific American is a journal which solicits articles by and large. So you can imagine that the person was invited by Scientific American. Very few Indians have published till today in Scientific American. So Professor S.D. Singh published this article in 1969, which was a summary of his work. He published articles in many other journals. And at the same time, in 1964, another person started doing field work who got PhD much later. And that was one Surinder Malmonot in Jodhpur. He started doing some work on langurs near Jodhpur and I passed out my master's degree in 1973. S.D. Singh left Punjab University, he went to Wisconsin, he was working in Harlow's lab. Then he became a professor at University of New Brunswick in Canada and he was invited by a new university in Merit called uh, Merit University, which is today called Jodhri Charan Singh University. He was invited there as a professor of psychology and to establish a private lab. This was another very unique thing in the country that there were, there were monkeys, the monkeys were in the lab, the work was being done on lobectomy and uh, on experimental learning and also field research in uh, near Dehradun, what is today called Rajaji Sanctuary. I passed out my degree in 1973 from Punjab University Chandigarh and I joined Professor S.T. Singh in June 1973 to work on rhesus monkeys. That was my beginning. I went to the Shivaliks. In July 1973, Professor S.D. Singh invited, Mona didn't have PhD then, yeah, yes. He, he came to know that there is somebody else working on langurs, so he invited Mona to give a talk at the psychology department in Merit University in July 73. This is where I met Mona for the first time, and since then it has been a very close friendship, colleagueship, co-authorship, and we have had excellent relations, you know, for the, for how much? Gosh, half a century. It was 1973. This is 2024, and I'm talking about half a century. 
so we have had very close relationship when fortunately we just lost him a uh, couple of months back the next uh, piece I make some arrangement here for with the remote control and all with it's other uh, purposes on its way uh, so just a little bit about uh, sm or not about his uh, about his life he was born in 1941 he did his masters in uh, uh, 1964 at the age of 23 he got his masters degree in zoology and started teaching right then at uh, jodhpur university and he taught till his retirement 2000 2001 in between he was a humbled fellow in uh, germany at gottingen where he did some work on uh, marlow sets he retired as professor and head of the department and expired last year on september it was september 12 Now I will talk about very briefly four different types of. See, one thing, one thing I want to tell in the beginning, Dr. Monat did lot of research himself. But you would see as I talk about that his major contribution was he was a great provider. He has provided opportunities. He brought lot of research funds. He created opportunities for lot of people. Many of them are sitting here, made their careers not only in Jodhpur but in lot of other areas in the country. so he has really produced a crop of primatologists in the country i mean that is his, that is his major contribution so i would talk about four things about uh, about uh, dr mon or about the field uh, research around jodhpur and lagoons and then a major project he brought was an indo german project in 1977 then indo us private project in 1994 and founding of the school of uh, desert sciences the next one oh this is see in rajasthan they have a uh, custom of making cities with colors you go to jaipur and that hill nearby you go and climb that hill and stand there you see everything is pink so it's got pink city the jodhpur jaipur and jodhpur is a blue city so you see the city in the aerial view of uh, blue city of jodhpur like you know people who come to mysore i'm not talking about those who come to it in conferences but those who come as tourists they don't miss one particular place in mysore and that is called brindavan gardens i am sure everybody has heard of brindavan gardens if you are in jodhpur you don't miss one place it's called mandor gardens just outside jodhpur is a very beautiful place there are those ancient temples and is mandor gardens supposed to be the birth place of the queen of king ravan queen mandodri that's what is called mandor this place probably uh, queen mandodri was and many brahmin families in uh, jodhpur consider ravan as their son in law so probably uh, madodri was born in this place were ancient uh, temples okay, they are very beautiful temples but for us interesting thing today is you see this wall here of uh, this uh, this these gardens and behind this wall you see some rocky area you know these are all some extensive area with lot of rocks and sparse vegetation mostly acacia and some places zizipus and <coughs> this kind of vegetation uh, the next one This is where lives a very unique population of langurs, and this is their typical habitat. You know, they they are living in uh, these rocks. At the next one, please. And this is where people go. Some of the groups people don't visit there bit far, but most of the groups people visit there, and there many of them are quite provisionalized. And there are very few such trees where these langurs sleep. Otherwise, they sleep in the rocks. They are all over the rocks. You can see them in the night sleeping. the next one and there are people come there and feed them you know some groups are highly provisionalized people come and give them even green vegetables person sits there and monkeys are there uh, you know all around uh, next one you know cattle there and the next one will be very interesting there will be grooming dogs and picking the lice and the ticks to 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 eat so this place now here is the village called chonka and there is a village called uh, daijar This is a distance of 24 kilometers. I remember in hot summer I walked one day long time ago. This distance and this area which I am showing you, this map, this is the area where these langurs are, these Hanuman langurs. This distance of 24 kilometers and about five to six kilometers wide that area. This is where these these langur populations are. The next one. Now this was one comprehensive article which was published. There were some articles about uh, about the distribution of these langurs, but. Uh, Uh, in 1984 there were uh, these were city interestingly this jodhpur city was established in 1459 and there are records available that the lagoons were there before in the mandor region the lagoons were there the records that lagoons were already there and then there are in 1984 there were 42 groups living in three different habitat types they were in open scrub forest the rocky rocky area which i showed 
than in gardens, orchards, croplands, and in human habitations, in temples, in the city, in Jodhpur city, lot of places, you know, like we have the bird monkeys and rhesus monkeys in North India, langurs are there in uh, Jodhpur city also. And it's a very easy observation you can make. I mean, not even one focal sample of yours will go waste. According to our methodology, if your focal session is not complete, you discard it. You, to, you don't have to waste any, any of your focal samples. You can start seeing one monkey till evening and you can see the same monkey. They are so easily visible. So as a, as a result, the, what uh, Dr. Monat wrote in this article was the research potential of Jodhpur Langus because you can do any kind of research on behavior, on disease spectrum, morphology, genetics, reproductive biology, physiology, education purposes, etc. And Monat started looking at these langurs in 1965. Uh, the next one. Okay, this is a little bit about, about that habitat. This is, uh, you know, very hot, 0 degrees to 48 degrees. And uh, very low rainfall, water availability is only man-made. There is hardly any natural water available, natural forage. But most of the places the monkeys are provisionized. And no hunting because the monkeys are considered settled there. And langurs are not hunted by anybody there. Now the latest count which I have there now is uh, 2019 that there are about two and a half thousand monkeys, lagoons there and 39 groups. Anyway, this is their demography, but what is important as I said in the beginning that this is a very unique population of Haruman lagoons. 100 kilometer minimum rad radius, there are no lagoons, there is no lagoon population anywhere. This nobody knows the origin because this is, becomes one isolated, genetically isolated population. 100, 100 kilometers, anywhere or all around, it's all desert area, there are no, no langurs and that's what Mona talked about, a very genetically unique population for uh, uh, research purposes. The next one. Now, one subject which I want to talk a little bit uh, in detail, in 1965, Phyllis J, who was working in UP and in uh, Orcha village in Madhya Pradesh, she studied the Hanuman Lagoons and published a series of articles. The main came in our Bible 1965 uh, book of uh, Arvind Devore, Private and uh, Field Studies Private Behavior. You know, that's uh, everybody's Bible once for a time. That's where she published first article, all of them, Charles Southwick and Don Lindbergh and uh, uh, Paul, Paul Simons and Phyllis J. Now she reported that Hanuman Lagoons is a very peaceful society. They hardly ever uh, engage in aggression. So this was reported and published by Phyllis J. And then Sugiyama was working in Dharwar in 1965 at the same time, around the same time. And he reported, interestingly, he reported in infanticide that the Langur males kill infants. Now this became a hot topic, you know, this infanticide. And there was a psychologist called Kalaun, psychobiologist. He was doing these studies in America on rats, which we people also followed for some time in my rat lab. I had a laboratory where I also used to keep rats. You know, there were studies on crowding, and this was very famous study, but what is called high density infanticide pathology, called Kellown's pathology hypothesis or something. You know, these rat females, they would have six, seven, eight uh, Vistar Arduino rats, seven, eight pups. And once the population density was increased, in the same cage you have something like 10 to 15 uh, rats kept. And at some high density, these females started eating their own pups. And that was actually a very adaptive behavior because at least by eating some pups, they could raise one or two. They were the only source of protein for, for, for those rats. But anyway, but it was called pathology, a social pathology. And it was considered that this is a result of crowding. So Kalaun's experiments and what, what was uh, hypothesized at that time was crowding leads to high amount of aggression, so much so that it can uh, result in cannibalism, that uh, the females can start eating their own pups. So people immediately started uh, looking at the density of lagoons and it was very interesting by chance that the density of lagoons, you know, where, where uh, was in uh, Dharwad, these langurs were on the roadside. And Kumara and we also have much, much later, we, I used to talk to Sugyama and call him and tell him, you know, what is going on in Dharwad, how the langurs are now there. Sugyama also is a very, very old friend. There at that time, because a lot of uh, deforestation was going on, and the density of langurs was 84 to 133, whereas in uh, Finnish J population was only 3 animals per square kilometer. 
So it was obvious that time because <coughs> Calhoun's work was well known and immediately it was hypothesized that infanticide in langurs is a consequence of crowding. It is a consequence of high density because there are too many langurs uh, in, in the, the, those small areas. So like Calhoun's rats and these uh, langurs are becoming infanticidal. And Sugiyama also hinted in one of, uh, I picked up in one of his papers, he just wrote one, one sentence, he never elaborated this further. He said, avoidance of long delay in sexual receptivity in nursing females. I would come to this, that this was a very important thing he said, just one small line, but unfortunately never elaborated this, otherwise he would have been a proponent of a new hypothesis or a new concept in uh, uh, primatology and infanticide. And 1971, I have just come to us the first paper, first two papers published by Monod in 1971. He got his PhD later in 74. And he also reported infanticide. And what he, he attributed it to simultaneous sexual excitement and enragement. Very important, very important observation or inference. See, there are, as all of you who have studied animal behavior, we talk of two different levels of causation. You know, what is called uh, primary, uh, primary causation and ultimate causation and uh, primary is basically the physiological processes, the underlying mechanism. You know, we evolutionary biologists feel many times satisfied with some evolutionary explanation. Oh, this is Darwinian selection, this is how it works. Okay, this is how it is selected for. But we forget that there has to be an underlying mechanism. Anything has to happen, it has to have an underlying mechanism. So what Monod hinted at was an underlying mechanism that you look at this now, the males are living in male bands, okay, and the langur groups usually are uh, unimale groups. There is one male and several females, and a new male comes. You know, these are deadly fights. Most of the fights, 80-90% of the fights, sometimes the animals get killed or very, very badly wounded. So if the resident male is, uh, if the intruder male is wounded, who goes back, either becomes, you know, solitary or will be going back to the male band. But if the resident male is defeated or killed, is defeated, that resident male becomes a solitary male. You know, it's a prestige issue because all other male, male, male bands are thrown by him out. So they are all, like, you know, he doesn't want to go and his ego, you know, he can't go and live as a subordinate individual with all those who were thrown out. So that more or most of these males become solitary males. Okay. Now, Monod's explanation was that when this new male comes, his hormonal titers are very high. He just comes from that male band, he enters the, you know, with the, with the, these several females and females are nursing young and they are not sexually receptive. So this monkey, for example, you know, it starts attacking infants because they are coming in the way, the females are looking after the infants, the females don't follow the male and the infants become targets and infants get killed and one thing happens is that the females become sexually receptive. So, uh, you know, the previous one, so, it gets selected for. I mean, we'll come to that later, but the next. Okay, next one. So, Monod got his PhD on, uh, his, wrote his thesis, Some Aspects of Social Change and Infant Killing in the Hanuman Langur. And, oh, no, sorry, not PhD later. These are two papers which Monod published. Okay, in 71. Then something, another very interesting happened. Around that time, in uh, around mid 70s or early 70s, there was this W.D. Hamilton in 1960s published his papers on inclusive fitness. A new explanation of animal behavior that what matters in evolution is how many copies the gene leaves behind in the gene pool of next generation rather than simply the number of surviving offspring as uh, Darwin, uh, Darwin explained. So there was a whole new talk about and then Wilson published in book in 1975, sociobiology, so that the whole twist, a very different explanation given to all animal behavior interpreted differently before in terms of physiology, in terms of biochemistry, in, you know, then people started looking at it in a very different way, in a, the sociobiological explanation. And there was a young student, Sarah, uh, Sarah Blaffer Hardy. She was at, at, uh, at Harvard. She was tutored by, taught by E.O. Wilson and Robert Trivers, another uh, great sociobiologist. And she wanted to, and she came to know about this infanticide. She wanted to study these uh, Hanuman Langurs and she landed in Jodhpur in 1971. Interestingly, it was I think the month of June and I have been there to these rocks in the months of May, June. By 10 o'clock you might as well run away from that place. The heat is repulsed, repulsed from those, those rocks. The area becomes very hot. Now this young girl comes from America, a temperate region, 
and lands in Jodhpur, the temperature was 48 degrees. She goes to those rocks. She was, she was virtually feeling she is walking into an oven. So it was born or realized it's going to be impossible for her to study these monkeys, langurs. And there was another isolated population, there is Mount Abu. And the climate is much better than uh, Jodhpur. So he thought that climate would be good for uh, Sarah. So he took her to Mount Abu, showed her this population of langurs. Sarah Blepper Hurt started working there on those langurs. Intermittently, she has been coming and working from 1971 to 75. She worked on Hanuman langurs, all initiated by uh, S.M. Monot, uh, the next one. She made very interesting observations. Now, she reported many cases of male takeovers, you know, this uh, intruder male coming and uh, attacking uh, the resident males. And often, after a male takeover, infanticide occurred. And Takeovers occurred and infanticide occurs are so in areas where there was a very low population density. Go back to what I said before, it was interpreted that Sugiyama's Dharwar region had very high density of langurs. So infanticide occurs because of the high density of langurs. But what she reported was that it's occurring everywhere. Even in places where there is a very low population density, after takeover, infanticide was often occurring. And then she reported that actually it is interbirth interval is about 27 months in Langurs. But if infanticide occurred, it was the interbirth interval reduced to 6 to 7 months. Obviously, the females became receptive. And so she proposed that infant killing was not a social pathology. It was a male reproductive strategy. It was not a social pathology due to overcrowding, but it is a male reproductive strategy to garner access to females. And since fitness gets enhanced, automatically there is a natural selection for the trait. I mean, natural selection doesn't see ethics, natural selection doesn't see the so-called morality. It simply sees what process leads to fitness, increases fitness. Since it increases the fitness of the males, it gets selected for. So this was a new explanation given for, uh, for infanticide, the next one. Okay, at, that was the time, everybody I am sure, it must be, you know, I, I, we know this, everybody knows this book. In, uh, yeah, thank you. In 1975, was 77, was this famous book published. We had no book on primates in South Asia. So the first which has been remained a Bible till now. I don't know how many thousands of citations of this book. Everybody writes anything. Always Langur are distributed here, Runwa you know, uh, and Mohan uh, 77. Everywhere this book, book gets cited. Now this was book, the first comprehensive book on which Monot and uh, Runwa brought out. And uh, there were, you know, five prosimians actually not because they also included uh, three shoes, which are actually not primates. So, and macaques, colobines, gibbons, ecology, behavior, everything about every species, there was a bit written about it, about its uh, ecology, about behavior, taxonomy, anatomy, genetics, reproductive biology, whatever was known at that time. So, for all the species and subspecies, everything was uh, written in, in that book. The next one. Okay. So the PhD works, I'll just give the titles of uh, the PhD works which have been done around that place. Uh, Jodhpur Ecology and Behavior of the Common Indian Lagur was more not so PhD. And uh, uh, Sarah Blapper heard his PhD, the Lagurs of Abu, uh, Female and Male Strategies of Reproduction. Then, as I said, Monot launched several major projects. In 1977, actually the project was uh, conceived by Christian Fogel in, uh, in uh, Gottingen. And this was to study the individual life history and the group histories. If there is a connection between the life history of an individual and that of the group. So that was the main thing where that project started. It, the duration was five years, but the work continued for many years. And the next one, a lot of people worked. <coughs> Look at the number of PhDs. Number of uh, Germans did PhDs. Uh, Winkler did PhD on uh, the eco-ethology of free-living free Hanuman Lagurs. This was uh, uh, Winkler's PhD, then uh, Sommer did a PhD by this, uh, female and male reproductive strategies of Hanuman Lagurs of Jodhpur. This was his PhD work, and then Carola Boris did excellent work on competition in uh, pre living uh, uh, Langur females. So these were classic works done by these uh, German researchers in Jodhpur, all facilitated by, by Monot. The next one. And then the works continued. Srivastava, Anil Srivastava did PhD on feeding ecology and behavior of Anuman Lagurs. The project was closed by then, but the work continued under, under, under that project. And there was this uh, work by Agora Murthy, 
actually Agora was, uh, Ajit, you remember Agora, right? Yeah, yeah Agora was uh, from South India, from Tamil Nadu. He wanted to work with me for PhD. And at that time, <coughs> it was 95 or something, 85 or something. <coughs> I didn't have any fellowship available. So I called Mohan Ardhi, if he had some money in some fellowship, he said he has. So Agora went there to Jodhpur. And he did PhD work with the uh, with the Monod, and this was another interesting thing which Agora brought in the PhD thesis that when there was a male takeover, not only did the male kill the infants, but many of the females who were pregnant, mechanism will be again probably stress. You know, the stress <coughs> caused by the new male, but many of the pregnant females underwent abortion. Now, this was another sociobiological explanation that it could also be a female reproductive strategy abandoned it right now rather than producing the infant and that infant gets killed by the by the male lagoon, intruder male lagoon. So this could be a counter strategy by the female. Number of counter strategies have been reported, you know, pseudo mating, pseudo estrus, and uh, you know, number of these female strategies have been uh, reported. So Agora reported that it could also be a female reproductive strategy that cut down the investment rather than reproducing offspring and then offspring being killed by, by, by the intruder male. So, the very important contribution, there was a Larsing Rajpurohit, he worked on male social organization, very two people had worked, and he actually looked at the migrating males, at what age they migrate, and their sons follow them, and they form all these all male bands. So, he followed mostly these, these, these males, especially those who were leaving the, the natal groups. Uh, yeah. Now, I just want to tell a little bit about another person. There was a young guy, you know, my date of birth is 11th January 1952, but in officially records, official records is written 11th April 1951. So I used to tell Carl Suresh, hey young man, because he was one day younger to me. So there was this this uh, this guy Suresh Makwana. He did his uh, you know BSc, MSc, etc. in Jodhpur, and I left Professor S.T. Singh's lab in 1974. I came to South India, and Makwana studied zoology in Jodhpur, and he went to Meerut and started working with Professor S. D. Singh in our old lab. And for some time he worked on the vectomized rhesus monkeys, but then left and became interested more in ecology. And he did his home ranges, etc. and that kind of uh, ecology work in Asarudi Forest, where I was working uh, earlier. And uh, he got a fellowship from agriculture ministry, got himself up, uh, you know, enrolled in the FIR, Forest, FIR, Forest Research Institute in Dehradun, but got registered for PhD with SM or not. And did his PhD in 1979, I think, yeah, and he joined uh, the Desert Regional, St Regional Station of ZSI in Jodhpur as a research associate. And unfortunately, <laughs> December 16, 1980, poor Bukai was going on his bicycle. He was going to the ZSI office, and some insane truck driver, you know, driving at some mad speeds, ran over four people and killed them on the spot. Unfortunately, Suresh Makwana was one of them. It was such a shock in the country that time. And Mrs. Indra Gandhi sent a message when the death of a young scientist of such promise is a great loss to the country. The next one. So, in his memory, Monot organized this, uh, this conference. You know, this conference was organized in February 17, four day conference in 1982 in uh, Jodhpur. And we had actually 85. Like here, I think it's something like the same number. We had 85 abstracts. People came from many countries, from USA, from uh, Japan, from uh, uh, from America, from Germany, many. All of those people who had old German connections. So a lot of people came for this uh, this uh, symposium. And this was conducted in Jodhpur. You can't see the photographs properly. This is SM Monot. And to his right is uh, Dr. Runwal. If there is still any resemblance, this with the... Uh, black jacket and white shirt is me, and uh, to my left is Raghubir Singh Pirta, to my right is Baldev Singh Garewal. He did PhD on Japanese monkeys under Sugiyama, this is Yukimaru Sugiyama. This was a big conference, and the result of this conference was the next one. Another famous book, which I am sure all of you would have seen again, Current Private Researches, brought about by uh, Runwal Monot and uh, uh, Rathor, who was uh, in ZSI that time. So this book was published by this was published by Jodhpur University, uh, 74 papers in different topics, etc. So this is another important contribution by Monod, first the primates of South Asia, and then this book on uh, 
on uh, current pioneer researches. Next one, please. Okay. Then in 94 and 99, 94 to 99, five year long project. This was another major project <coughs> brought by. It took several years to get ministries' permissions. Several ministries had to clear. The project was funded by US government, by the US Fish and uh, uh, Wildlife Service. They funded this project. And at that time, this was the biggest field project in the country with a budget layout of 1 crore 72 lakhs. At that time in 1994, the, I got the project from MOEF, 94, 9, 94, 99, five years project only. And uh, the budget was some 21 lakhs or something. This was 1 crore 72 lakh rupees budget. The, the biggest ecology project in, in the country. Some research was done around Jodhpur, very little, but Monod came out with a great idea that look, we have a region in the country, northeast, that's where, imagine, imagine the number of primate species there. Such a great research potential, hardly anybody was working. <coughs> Few people like Mukherjee and all used to go and do some zoological survey of India people, some surveys here and there, and publish in Indian forest or some of these places. But no systematic research was done in the northeast. So he thought that we should concentrate mostly on the northeast in India. So there was a massive deployment of researchers in uh, the northeast in India. He collaborated with the PC, PC Bhattacharji in the zoology department in the Guwahati University. And I was also an investigator along with that because one part of that was, as, as I would come to that, is uh, from Jodhpur to Mysore. So most of the people were, were deployed in northeast. And interesting thing was, again, more not said, I would take all the researchers from northeast only. So all the researchers were hired, were recruited from northeast. Let the people of that place only, you know, start work. Let them, uh, you know, learn. let them uh, establish uh, primatology because that's where most of the primates are. And the next one. So Anil Shangani was the only person who did PhD at that time as a part of Indo-US primate project in the Jodhpur. But the continuation of that couple of other people, at least two more people did PhDs. But uh, Anil Shangani, no, sorry, yeah, Shangani studied eco-behavioral diversity of langurs living in different ecosystems. And this was in Jodhpur, but most of the work he did was in Kumbhagar forest. And he compared these uh, monkeys and uh, langurs in the forest and non-forest areas. The next month. And two more PhDs came out of this later on. This is uh, DS, not the earlier one is Lal. No, that was LS Raj Prohet, so don't confuse. This is DS Raj Prohet. And he works on uh, dominus hierarchy and his role in uh, social organization in langurs and uh, Gautam Sharma did PhD on paternal care and Hanuman Lagoos. This was another different topic. So all initiated by Mo not a continuation of the Indo-US primate project the next month. But now let us go to probably a little bit, uh, Dilip, I have asked him to speak something and Joshua has come, I think. Both are uh, from this. And uh, this was that deployment. Now you can see the result of that is that primatology is flourishing there in Northeast India. And Dilip is here. He was the first person was recruited into the Indo-US primate project he did his PhD on socio-ecology of, I will not read all this, you know, you are probably uh, you know, familiar with this. And he studied socio-ecology of scuffed macaques. And then Joshua, this Janta Das studied socio-ecology of, you see that number of species, almost all species were covered there. Dilip did on uh, scuffed macaques and uh, Janta did on uh, socio-ecology of Pulak Gibbons, uh, the next one, and uh, Rekha Medhi who is now Rekha Chetri, Dilip, Dilip's wife, she was Rekha Medhi then, she studied behavior of golden langurs. Okay, this was uh, introduced population on, on an island. So she studied how they make adaptations uh, to that environment. And uh, uh, Joshua, he is here. Joshua, yes, have you come? Ah, you, you are sitting there only. <coughs> okay, he did PhD ecology and uh, social behavior of the golden langur, the next one. Uh, Prabhar Sarkar worked on ecology and dynamics of social relationships of the Assamese macaques. Okay, I mean, I have illustrated so one, one sentence, etc. If somebody is interested, you can take this. Uh, and then Bos worked on eco-behavioral study of fairies leaf monkey. So you see, almost all species are covered. And uh, hey, who worked on pigtail macaques? No, nobody. Nobody, nobody. 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 Yeah, nobody. yeah. It's interestingly, pigtail macaque is left out. I don't know why. <laughs> okay, the next next one. Okay, uh, Deepak Vora did on ecology and social behavior of cat langur. So fairies, leaf monkey, golden langur, cap langur are, are covered, covered. And later on, Naba, Nabaji Das has worked on ecology and behavior of uh, slow loris. And finally, there was a PhD on loris also. 
So these were all works done directly under uh, Indo-US primate project and then continuation of that and you can see that primatology is really very well established in northeastern uh, north, northeast India now and all credit goes to Dr. Monod and collaboration with the PCB there in uh, PC Bhattacharya in uh, Guwahati and several books have come out of uh, the, the product of Indo-US primate project. That time when the project was going on in 97 only Arun brought that small book when uh, we had a meeting in Delhi, I think, or uh, in uh, that Rajasthan Bhavan. It was released there, Primates of Northeast India, uh, by our own small book, then uh, Jayanta, PCB, and Biswas, and Dilip. And they have brought this book on uh, Western Hull of Gibbon, Sociocology, Threats and Conservation. Then Rekha and Dilip had brought this book, the, the Golden Langur, and Dilip and Rekha and PCB have brought this book on Hulok, the Ape of India. So this all culmination of the NWS Primate Project initiated by Monot. The next one. No, an offshoot of that was that there was uh, one DeFalco family, they gave a lot of money to the zoo, San Diego Zoo, and I was in touch with Don Lindbergh since a long time, and they wanted the work on, they wanted to donate this money for LTM, for the lion tailed macaques. So it was now who would go through ministries and all, so what we thought the best way was, we get the money also through you know, US private project. So the money from San Diego Zoo was given to Fish and Wildlife Service from there, it came to Indigenous Primate Project from there, it came to me. So the, that money came, so we got this research grant and the Sharma, Sharma, Bandilwa, Kumara? Ila. Ila, Ila. Hmm? No. So Sharma was working with, with me in my MOEA project, so I took him out and put him in uh, this, and he did PhD on reproductive biology of lion-tailed macaque, and we got additional funding from Indigenous Primate Project for Nicobar long tailed macaque. So you can see Monod's contribution everywhere. So Umagati had just finished PhD with uh, Ajit and then he came as a postdoc with me and we got this money for him to go to Nicobar Islands and the first comprehensive paper on the distribution that these uh, long tailed macaques are in three islands in Great Nicobar, in Little Nicobar, in Kachal, the first paper. And this paper is a collaborative paper by Umagati, me and Monod. So this was the first paper published on proper paper on uh, the Nicobar long tailed macaques. Okay, several people visited, they took part of US Fish and Wildlife Service, used to send them. So all the people, you know, big people, Don Lindbergh and Arvind Bernstein, John Oates, Tom Stusaker, Kathleen DeFalco, they all visited Jodhpur. Some of them were able to visit the Northeast, but all of them came to Mysore and all of them have spent time in Anamalai Tiger Reserve, where uh, our research work was going on. Yeah, next. <coughs> Okay, I won't talk about uh, Monarch's research, but except one paper, the, which was done by him and uh, some somebody else and uh, our uh, Anil Shangani. You know, in 19, in year two, Rana has a very different concept about urban monkeys. I have a very different concept about urban monkeys. We know, you know, feeding these stray animals is actually killing them. It's, uh, you know, feeding these monkeys is basically cruel to them. They, are, they should do the natural foraging. Any stray animals like this, but there was a severe drought in 2000 in Kumbhagar wildlife sanctuary. You see the number of within three years from 1991 to 2000. Look at the graph that right side. 50% population of Anwar Nagus died. This time, that, that time because of the drought. And in Jodhpur because the Nagus were provisioned, water was given by people, most of the food given by people. There is a small minor that is statistically non-significant. There, no, no, uh, there was no effect in Jodhpur. Uh, despite the drought was there, I mean it's the same, Kumbhagad is only a few kilometers. In Kumbhagad, 50% population died. So they brought this paper called Cities as Sanctuaries, that cities also can, the, sometime in the afternoon we would talk about, you know, where is the coexistence between monkeys, we have a panel discussion, where the coexistence is possible, where co coexistence is not possible. You know, we, ca we can't be idealistic in those places. But they showed in this paper that cities can act as uh, sanctuaries, the next one, please. Now quickly, Monot, you know, motivated by Anil Agarwal, you all know about Anil Agarwal, that uh, Down to Earth paper uh, magazine, he started this uh, uh, Center for Science and Environment in Delhi, and Monot and uh, Agarwal were very close friends. So Anil started the Center for uh, uh, Science and Environment, and uh, uh, Jodh in Jodhpur, Monot started School of Desert Science, Science, uh, Sciences, in Hindi, it was called Marudhar Vijayan Sansthan. It was started in Jodhpur with very nice objectives. In one way or the other, all are related to ecology. Although he started this mine labor protection. 
Imagine he started with a very different idea. Ultimate idea was ecology. It was stone mining. The labors, he organized these labor. That's why I said a social activist. He organized and moved, you know, led the movements of these mine labor people working in stone mines. But the idea was why wildlife environment protection, rural livelihood, drought mitigation, agriculture, education, etc. I mean, I just next one. Next one. These are various objectives of uh, the School of Desert Sciences. You know, this has been involved in this for, for some time. Integrated development of humanity, sustainable development of natural resources, improvement of environment, wildlife. So most of these things, if you see, they are all in some way or the other related to environment and ecology. Uh, the next one. These were different projects which uh, STS has carried out. You can go to their website. All this information is available. The School of Desert Sciences and uh, the various activities are still very active. The school is still very active and the more not till uh, you know September last year he died. Till then he was very actively, most of the time when I used to call, he used to be available in uh, SPS except for last few, few months when he was really sick. So he was very active in, uh, in School of Desert Sciences. So number of projects have been uh, carried out the next one. So he, this was you know, Australian Broadcasting Company, BBC, they have come there and carried out several programs on uh, in the in the desert region and more not giving interviews and all those those uh, in the, those places yeah. and some nice sentences written you know he says despite the government sinking crores of uh, rupees plight of the drought affected people remains unchanged not surprising this is what happens in our country on the face there will be you know what tribal development for this for that lots of money but what actually happens everybody knows so he suggested several things you know, which should happen. Start with very small things, small water bodies, water banks. And uh, in one article in Down to Earth, he wrote, if a modest beginning is made in these sectors for rural poor, irrespective of caste and creed, the livelihood issues can be addressed with positive results. So he did these, these kind of social activities. And uh, the last one, this was another book which uh, more not brought, you know, is what with the School of Desert Sciences, is environmental degradation in Western, Western Rajasthan. Uh, I think this was my nice last slide then. So, with this tribute, since it is supposed to be inaugural talk, so with this tribute to a great scientist and a great humanist, late Professor Dr. S. M. Monot, I inaugurated the second meeting of the Association of Indian Parameterologists, course co hosted by the Department of Studies and Psychology of the University of Mysore. <laughs> now, since, since two products of Indo US private project, uh, Dilip and Jehosu are there, so I requested Dilip and told him he has got some three, four slides. So they are so good, I would like them to say because we have time for another seven, eight minutes are there till 9.45. So Dilip and Jehosu, you can come and. Namaskar, uh, I'm 